Hello everybody. Today we're talking about identifying what could be skin cancer. And I'm here with the fantastic Dr. Justine Hextall, friend of Trini London, our dermatologist that we go to when we want to ask the serious questions. I think it's a topic that, you know, when we've discussed and, and you all have seen Dr. Justine on many other bits of content we do on the T-Zone, that it is something that is sometimes difficult to diagnose. Yes. And there is nobody here that we can do something on, but I think it'd be a good conversation as to how... Sure. If you're concerned with a discoloration of your skin, what could it be and how yeah. could you identify before you see somebody, maybe yes. you should be aware. So there are different forms of skin cancer. So the most common form of skin cancer is actually a basal cell carcinoma and that tends to be just localised. It shouldn't be dismissed because it can be quite destructive. Mm -hmm. The coll colloquial term for it is rodent ulcer and it can yes. erode the area. And uh, if, for example, that's on your nose and you have to have it operated on, that could be quite complicated. Yeah. Are they generally one location more than another? Uh, so they're quite commonly in sun-exposed areas. Okay. Uh, so we do see them on the head and neck, but you can also see them on the chest and back. So you, know, you right. can see basal cell carcinomas you know, in most areas, but we, we do see them a lot in sun-exposed sites. The second skin cancer is something called a squamous cell carcinoma, and they tend to be a bit more warty looking sometimes. So they yeah. tend to get a little wart that won't go away, and then it can develop a sort of slightly painful nodule there. It never quite heals, never quite goes away. Is it even in its colour uh, generally, or so Kind of yeah, often quite a yellowy colour and okay. they, they, we call them actinic keratoses, those are the term for them and people yeah. may have quite a lot of it and what we call field change where the sun has damaged the skin you get these little sort of warty sort of skin changes and often in older patients the concern for that is if they can become squamous cell carcinomas so if you develop a nodule that's grown quite quickly it's not healing it becomes painful mm -hmm. anything like that particularly if this is in a site for example like a lip or an ear yeah. you need to get that checked out All right. Important. So the first sign is this feels like it's changing. There yeah. might be a feeling attached to it where there wasn't before. It might have felt yes. quite benign. Yes. The colour might have changed. Yes, okay. and just becoming slightly more proud from the skin. You can feel there's got some substance to it. What makes them suddenly get worse? Well, it's lots of things. So it might be changing your immune system because there's always immune surveillance and things like skin cancer. We know yeah. that people who are immunosuppressed are, are, are more at risk of things like squamous cell carcinoma. Okay. So when I first became a consultant, I saw a lot of um, people who've been desert rats, you know, and they've had sun in, in, in their 20s and they were yeah. Yeah. presenting all these years later in their 70s with skin cancer. So there may be a delay mm -hmm. from having sort of excessive sun exposure when you're younger and it may yeah. be it's so it sits come under there and Example. And these are still localised, these it, kind of yes. uh, skin cancers? Well, squamous cell carcinoma can spread beyond the skin, and there are certain sites which are higher risk for that. You know, that's why I mentioned things like a lip or an ear, etc. Those are things that you have to be really aware yeah, of. Really yeah. aware okay. of. And I think people know themselves very well. So if a patient mm. says to me, I'm just not happy, I'm just concerned, there's something about this you know, that worries me, I listen to that. We're very good at knowing our own bodies, I think. Yeah. You know? So that's an important but thing. But people are also, the, as about certain, I think, generations feel, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's sort of, oh, it yeah. doesn't matter, it's fine, it will go away. I mean, yes. I, that not giving excuses for yourself not to check. Yes, you know, I, a little I, bit. I agree. So if something is ulcerating, it's scabbing, it's bleeding, it's not healing, yeah. it's not going away, it's becoming more pronounced, absolutely you want to get that checked out for mm -hmm. sure. And then of course the most important skin cancer to spot early is melanoma. And melanoma can affect all age groups. So really? you know no... as we can see it in someone in, in their 20s. It's more common as people get older, absolutely yeah. much more but common, you but you early. can see it earlier. So it has different ways of presenting, mm -hmm. but and I think that's important to differentiate that. But it's usually a area of pigmentation, a mole, which is changing, okay? So, so it's a mole you've already probably had. It won't appear out of nowhere. Well, or... you can get them, which which come out of nowhere okay, as well. Right. So, uh, and so, you don't want to be an easy yes, answer Yes, there's not, to an, easy, that. There's not yeah. an easy answer for yeah. that. So for example, if previously it had a nice round centre and now it's become asymmetrical, mm -hmm. then we're interested in that. The next thing is whether or not it's become sort of, uh, the colours have changed within it. So it may have gone from a brown colour to now having pink areas in it or dark areas in it. So it's become multicoloured. Yeah. So, or it's just become very dark. Mm -hmm. So I think the border may have changed. So the border may be nice and smooth and now it's yeah. raggedy. Yeah. Um, it may bleed. Quite often, um, melanomas are actually completely flat. So people always think, unless it's raised, you know, it's nothing to worry about. Okay. But actually, they can be completely flat to the skin. And I think one helpful uh, sort of tip I always give to patients is, does it stand out? We call it the ugly duckling sign because our moles tend to have a theme. Mm -hmm. So if they all look a certain way and one looks very different, then that's quite important to get yeah. that checked out. Of course, people have benign dark things which change, like what mm -hmm. we call seborrheic keratoses, these warty lesions which appear off the chest and back, particularly as you get older. Yeah. But it really is looking at 
uh, checking your skin and if something doesn't sit right, you feel it's changing, becoming more irregular, it's standing out, it may bleed, uh, you know, the colors have changed within it and you're concerned, make sure you have it checked out. And patients often say to me, I'm so sorry I wasted your time. I say, you've never wasted my yeah. time. I'm delighted to check all of your skin. Yeah. That's another thing that I advocate is a full skin check. Yeah. I think that's important. So if someone comes into my room, they will get a proper skin check and I will check everything. Yeah. Mainly because we did a study a few years ago and we showed that almost 20% of our melanomas, we picked them up incidentally. That is true. so important. And also I think because in America, because everything is, you have to pay for medical yes. care, there's more likelihood people have their derm. And yes. I think in England, we sort of feel, I'm not saying that's a hassle, but we can be so kind of, uh, see our GP mm -hmm. and then our GP might say you should go and see a derm, yes. a dermatologist. And it, it's, the process feels like, well, do I want to see an expert? It's like if I could pop into somebody. So what other organisations are there where you can just get national help? If a mole or something like that is serious and it's changing, we do have a good structure here on the NHS. So if you show your GP and your GP is concerned, then you can be referred on, on, on what we call a two-week rule. So you can be seen fairly quickly okay. um, and that will be checked out. So yeah. the first port of call really is your GP yeah, then to get through to your dermatologist. Yeah. But, you know, you can go to a mole checking clinic and then you'll have some uh, sort of software which will look at your skin yeah. personally i still think there's no substitute for an experienced for a dermatologist yeah. with, a, with a dermatoscope to have yeah. a close look but there are other structures as well i know there are certain outfits now where you send a photograph of a mole you're concerned about mm -hmm. and i think if they can't tell what's going on from that photo they will encourage you to come in person but okay. that, those, those are the routes you can take but never not bother if you're slightly worried. Never not bother. Yeah. We would absolutely love to see you because with melanoma, the sooner you come, the earlier we can pick it up, the better, without yeah. question. If you don't pick it up just to give that moment of a reality check, what percentage of people if it's not picked up? That's changed. It depends on the depth, but it's yeah. all about really the depth and the activity of, mm. of, of, of the melanoma. But I would say that interestingly now, we've got some incredible treatments. So, so melanoma that previously would have been very difficult to treat. We mm. do have some treatments for it now, but the key really is to get it picked up early, ideally. So it's about being vigilant, is it changing? Is there something I don't like about it? Maybe it's become more inflamed. And I think that if you've got risk factors, so for example, you've had a lot of sun exposure. Yeah. I think the worst form of sun exposure is to 50 weeks in the year in, in the UK and then two weeks going off to yes, uh, is, a Mediterranean sun. Helpful. Don't want to sunburn. That's really the key. Mm. Very important. And particularly in children, protect our children from sunburn. Yeah. And I, as a dermatologist, I think the sun is good for us. It mm. makes us feel good. You mm. know, there's lots of benefits to it. Yeah. But I always say to my patients, it's like any medicine, it's how you take it. So as long as you're cautious and you're, you're careful if you're in a hot country wear a t-shirt if you're if you're snorkeling make sure you're careful between 10 and 3 where you've got lots of UVB around um, and make sure you use a really good high factor broad spectrum sun cream yeah. which you reapply frequently and don't there's no substitute for shade a hat and maybe a nice shirt so be careful and remember that 80% of what we consider to be normal aging in the skin is probably related to UV so if you want to keep looking good wear your sunscreen. Wear the SPF well, that was so helpful. If you feel that there are things you'd like us to discuss on the T-Zone that you feel we haven't considered with a dermatologist, please leave notes on our social and we will get Dr. Justine in again to have another chat. Okay. Until then, Thank goodbye. you. Thank, thank you so you. much. <laughs>